Hello, my name is Dave Rakel. I'm here with my good buddy, David Kiefer. We're with the University of Wisconsin Integrated Medicine Program, and we're going to take a few minutes to talk about stress and GERD or reflux disease. Um, so I, I find this quite fascinating regarding the whole uh, reality that we really don't have any mind or body, that we're all one unit. And, and if I come in uh, and complain of epigastric pain, I love to listen to metaphor, you know, in, That's right. in regards to that. So yeah. if, if I'm coming in with epigastric pain, well, what might be some questions you might find helpful in regards to that? Yeah, metaphor? I mean, the classic one would be, Dave, you know, what's eating you up inside? You know, it's just like the acid in the stomach yeah. and it all feeds in together. My boss is a pain in the, in the, in the stomach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just give me that purple pill. I'll be fine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. And the, I mean, the other day, too, I saw a patient who came in um, and he had one month of heartburn and never had it before. But and he didn't really put all the pieces together, just started school a, mo a month ago and just started a new job 30 to 40 hours a week. In addition to that, and hadn't smoked in years and started smoking again. Yeah. All came together and just to the how all those things kind of fit in together. Yeah. So, I mean, what a great opportunity to learn from a symptom, yeah. right? You know, what's eating you up inside? Yeah. Okay, there's some stress in my life. Yeah. Let's deal with that stress instead of just shutting off the, the signal or that symptom yeah. that's asking us for some attention. Yeah. yeah. And I think so often in healthcare, we're too quick to shut it off and not learn from it. And this is a great opportunity to learn from our body, particularly with reflux disease, because there is quite a bit of, of research showing that stress can exacerbate this, is there not? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so some people develop um, uh, GERD for the first time after becoming really anxious. Mm -hmm. And uh, other times people who have anxiety and GERD in the times when they're more anxious, their GERD is worse than it is when they're calm. So yeah. absolutely. So what are some simple things that we can recommend to help calm that down a little bit? Yeah. Um, so there are all kinds of things we can tell people about stress management um, from the uh, even just exercise, which we know that, you know, helps the parasympathetic nervous system, moderate exercise done regularly. Uh, people have much less episodes of GERD than they would if they weren't exercising. Well, what, what you do in your exercise is important too. If you're oh, thinking yeah. about all the stress of the day, that can make it worse. But if you, <laughs> if you focus your mind on your cadence or your breath yeah. and you get your mind out of all the chaos, yeah. that can be meditation in your exercise, That's which a good can point. be quite helpful. What and then, well, you think about what you do when you exercise, and there is that need to breathe deeper and slower until yeah. you exercise, you know, fast, and then you have to breathe <laughs> faster. But and that gives well, you, us—you told us the moderate exercise is most important. Yeah, right? that's we right. We want to stay away from the over-exerting exercise. Yeah, the too strenuous exercise might make things yeah. worse. But then we think about all the breathing um, yeah. that might help out too. So just some simple, uh, slow, deep breaths. Yeah. How about? self-hypnosis or, or guided imagery or some of those techniques? Do you feel like they might play a role? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, there are some experts who will help people learn a self-hypnotic technique. There are tapes. You can go to a practitioner um, and they can bring you into a trance state, which certainly can help with those kind of, you know, yeah. enhance that mind-body connection in a positive way. I think one of the most important things that we can do in the clinic is just bring attention, awareness, too, how our lives influence our physical symptoms. Yeah. And yeah, just right. that awareness sometimes makes the symptoms go away. Yeah. Versus if, if we don't turn our attention to it, the body keeps screaming for some sort of attention. Yeah. And, and yeah. if we just turn that off with the medication, yeah. are we really healing the body? I don't know. It, it's a really great point. And that awareness I've noticed too can help um, enhance patient adherence and, um, and increase patient motivation. So yeah. the patient I was telling you about who had all these things starting to go on and miraculously that's when the heartburn kicked in for him. Once he realized that all those factors might be um, uh, pos possibly causative, mm -hmm. it motivated him to stop smoking, to work on stress management, try to get a little bit more sleep, see maybe cut back hours at work a little bit and then things you know hopefully will be better. Nice. Now we should also um touch on the importance of not ignoring <laughs> persistent right. symptoms over time. That sometimes this can go on for long periods of time. It can lead to Barrett's esophagus, as you mentioned. That can lead to adenocarcinoma. There's a, a tremendous benefit in surgery sometimes for more severe cases. And uh, we shouldn't say that this is all, um, we can all, we can cure all cases with that's, these measures. That's a good point. Uh, many can be, that's a good point. but not all can. That's a good point. So, um, for instance, you might refer for um, 
um, an endoscopy just to make sure right. that someone right. doesn't have a hernia. A hiatal hernia could, you know, despite all of our attempts at integrative therapeutics, might still cause heartburn or gastritis for mm -hmm. people. And um, they might need an EGD also to rule out the Barrett's esophagus. Yeah, so if someone is able to come off their proton pump inhibitor, uh, but they still have symptoms over time, then another EGD might be worthwhile to see if there's any irritation of that lower esophageal sphincter and lower esophagus that might suggest we need to be more aggressive with our therapy. Yeah, that's a good point. So, I mean, we have so many different things that we can do for someone with heartburn from simple, easy, in the clinic, learn a new breathing technique to somebody that may have more severe symptoms and we start thinking about other things. So it's, it's definitely, you know, working with our other colleagues and managing their symptoms and following it over time that yeah. it, it helps guide their therapy. Yeah. I, I, this, the, the, this unfortunate cases I see is that we jump right to the most aggressive yeah. therapy <laughs> without exploring the, some of these other much more simple things that yeah. we can do to really allow the body to self heal. That's true. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.